and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel here today guys to something very special indeed because we are all absolutely elated after Barca's victory over Paris Saint-Germain in the Champions League and today we're going to be talking about the team that made all of that possible, all of the big match performances. We're also going to be talking about reaction from Xavi and from Luis Enrique. Focus as well on Mbappe and the man that stopped him along with Usman Dembele and that celebration there is lots to come and we are going to enjoy it so come on and let's do this but we have to start first of all with some extra special super thanks shout out see a big shout out to Ali for the fantastic support coming in also to Fred from Boston to Amadou and to Amir and to Eric who have already appeared here before they are back and I really really appreciate the amazing support right now and the whole feeling in the fan base it is bouncing we are all absolutely energized by what we saw at the Parc des Princes last night and I want to start by talking about Xavi here. He spoke after the game of course he was happy. He was mostly proud of what he'd seen from his players. He said today we played well and we were united defensively as a team, as a group. He said I'm very proud. Everything worked well. He said we do have to improve our concentration in the first minutes of the second half but we managed to mature and recover from a match that became very very difficult. And of course guys those few minutes at the start of the second half they really did cause us all real pain real nerves we were thinking okay are we going to throw the game away but I think it's so important here that we bounce back from that that we proved that we can because Chaffee went on to say I hope that the ghosts have died because he said we have gone through difficult years in the Champions League recently but this win shows that Barca are still alive and that is why these kinds of nights are so important here that is why showing the that we can bounce back, that we can take a few punches, take a few knocks, but we can still rise again. That's so important here. That's going to help to get rid of the scars that we have in Europe. Over the past two seasons, the disappointments, the collapses that we've seen, we've got to prove we've come through them. And last night was a big, big showing from every single player of some mental strength and some mental fortitude, which can take you far in this competition. And I thought Luis Enrique's reaction to his team's defeat against Barca was really interesting as well because he said we are not happy with the defeat he said the second leg will be like a final for us now that is our objective and he said I've got no doubt at all that we can qualify but I do congratulate Barcelona for their win and their performance tonight and Luis Enrique several times there in his press conference said I repeat we could have won this game he said I chose players because I thought they were the best for this game but he said honestly it didn't really work he said we changed our plan at half time and we went on to score two goals. Football is about the small details and hopefully in the second leg the small details go our way and when he was actually asked there do you feel now that after this first leg Barca are the new favourites? Luis Enrique said I never see the opposition as the favourites. He said whoever they are that's just the way I see it. He said I continue to believe that we will go to win the game and we are going to go to Barcelona to fight a war. So Luis Enrique and PSG, they've not given up. Far, far from it here. They still have belief that they can get this tie won. But I think it's interesting because when you listen to Xavi there, some of the first words that he actually said in his press conference after the game, PSG are still the favourites. Xavi here is more than happy to play into that narrative that Barca here are still the underdogs in the tie, that we're still going very much under the radar, that people may still continue to write us off. And I think we're enjoying that tag at times. We're using Using that in the right way. We're taking pressure off of the players where possible. And I think what Xavi was also really, really keen to do after the game, and I think what we all are sort of trying to do here as well, just keeping everybody's feet on the ground. Because he said several times, we're only halfway there. There's still plenty of work still to do in that second leg in Barcelona. Nothing has been decided yet. And I think we've made the perfect start to the tie. You know, things couldn't have really gone too much better than this for us. To go away, to go to PSG, to score three goals on the night. It's absolutely unbelievable, but it's now our responsibility and it's now our main objective. Finish the job. And we plan to do exactly that 
on Tuesday. And I do think though guys that right here after a game like this, after a night like this, it is only fair that we do give Xavi his full credit for the game that he played out there, the game that he set the team up to play, because I think with his lineup, it was very, very important that he didn't overcomplicate things, that he didn't just change things around for the sake of it here in a big game, especially looking at that defence, we kept it exactly as we had been. We knew what had been working, we stuck to that, and we really did have a clear game plan, but I think even more in Importantly than that lineup, it was actually the in-game management that really impressed me actually from Xavi last night because there's been plenty of times this season whereby in a game things have changed, you know, things have gotten away from us. An opposition coach there has made a change or a tweak, and often we haven't been able to react to it in a good way, or we haven't been able to react to it quickly enough. But I just thought yesterday, you know, with the changes that Luis Enrique made, with the way the game was starting to run away from us, we were able to get that control back. And I thought Xavi's subs last night were absolutely key and very, very well timed. You look there at the Pedri change, you know, he came on and instantly tipped the game in our favour. Xiao Felix as well, by the way, did have an impact on the game too. And I thought it was quite incredible as well that Christensen was brought on at such a key time. And then he instantly went on to score the winning goal. And I also think that that period of the game when PSG were trying to get that third goal themselves, Christensen really did help solidify that midfield, especially in the defensive areas. But of course we do have a problem right now and we do have a big problem ahead of that second leg because Sergio Roberto had already picked up a yellow card in the first half which will now rule him out of that second leg encounter. But the big problem now is Christensen will also miss the second leg with suspension because he picked up there a yellow card in the 88th minute of the game. We spoke before the match about there was many Barcelona players who were really walking the tightrope. Christensen and Roberto now have fallen into that trap and that means now that on Tuesday, Xavi is going to have to reshuffle his midfield once again. No Roberto, no Christensen there. There's going to be some tweaks, certainly on the defensive side of that midfield, but I think here Xavi does have time to plan. He's got several days here to get things in order. He's also got players back from injury. Frankie, of course, Pedri back as well last night. Absolutely fantastic. And we're going to be talking a lot more about Barca's approach, about what we need to do and what we must do in that second leg from a tactical viewpoint in these coming days, of course. But I think one thing here that we we really do have to draw attention to after a game like last night and look at the performance that Barcelona put in. What you've got to say is, aside from the individual moments that we're certainly going to talk about here, what we did see was a real team performance again. And we've seen this certainly over the past few weeks of Barca, whereby we're coming together. We are a well-oiled machine. We look so much more organised right now in all different areas of the field. The defence there was absolutely outstanding for much of that game. Apart from a few momentary lapses, you look at the field. It's so strong there, so energetic, and the attack really played its part as well. Lewandowski, I think, played a really good game yesterday in terms of his overall play, his pressing, his work rate. The passing was very, very crisp as well, as we've also seen recently from him. So every single player was playing their part, working hard for the team, and we knew that coming to PSG, that was exactly what we had to do. That was the only thing that was going to give us the win that we wanted. But of course, there were individual moments of genius of quality and we have to talk more about Rafinha right here today guys because honestly that was by far and away his best game in a Barcelona shirt he was a constant threat and I mean constant threat there to PSG it didn't matter where he was playing over to the left if he was coming central or over to the right whatever he was everywhere on the pitch they did not know where Rafinha was going to come from next they did not know how to mark him how to track his runs where to be to stop him it was absolutely incredible and when he plays like that you want to give him a free roll. You want to say to him, go out there and just cause mayhem. You just run. You put in the effort. You put in the work. You drag this opposition here, there and everywhere. And we'll just sit back and enjoy it. And I thought Rafinha chased every ball, won every ball, took on shots. He was switching play. He was an absolute joy to watch. And by the way, we knew that he would thrive in this kind of situation. We knew that he would thrive in this kind of game here. The kind of space that he had to explore and really exploit that. And I would still expect that to be there in the second leg by the way, maybe even more so, and that's the exciting thing here, Rafinha can look at this second leg against PSG as a real opportunity again to only follow up on this first leg performance and I guess in a way guys, you know, looking at the way that he played yesterday, Rafinha, looking at the kind of player that he is, at times for me it almost feels like he's wasted at Barca because you think of course that he came in from the Premier League, he was playing there at Leeds where he was so, so impressive, but again against most teams, there was space opening up, there was opportunities for him to play like this, and then you come to Barca 
And quite often, you're in very tight spaces. You're coming up against deep blocks. There's absolutely no room to manoeuvre. And it's really tricky for any player coming in. It's almost as though you're playing an entirely different game at this club. But I think recently, we've been able to utilise Rafinha's qualities much, much more. Of course, in recent games, we've had more space. That's what happens in more higher profile games. You're going to come up against teams that attack you. You're going to have opportunities to counter on your own. And Rafinha is absolutely dominant in those areas. But also, we've also realised that when there is a deep block, when there is less space for him to work in, he can come inside. He can still make runs from deep. He can still be effective. So it just seems here, like piece by piece, bit by bit, as we are spending more and more time here with Rafinha, as we move deeper into his Barcelona career, we're now starting to understand him a bit more. We're now starting to utilise him and use him a little bit better. And like I say, he was outstanding last night. If he plays like that, if he's a threat like that, you want him out there and you want him in your team every single game. Make no mistake about that. Huge, huge credit to him. But he was not the only match winner because we also have to talk here about our young man in defence. Because why don't we start by saying Kylian Mbappe, before this game, made a real point of saying, look, this is a big occasion, this is a big game, and I'm not going to hide. I am not going anywhere. I am going to be there. I will not be hiding. Well, Pau Kubasi had other ideas, Kylian, because last night Mbappe had zero shots on target. He only had one shot off target in the game. Five dribbles that he attempted, one of them was successful. He won just two of his ten ground duels, and he lost possession of the ball 13 times in total. And genuinely, guys, and this is not to sort of make fun of Mbappe, he's still an absolutely world-class player. This is just to draw attention to the fact this is one of the quietest games I've ever seen of him, whereby you nullify him, because usually he always has moments, he has opportunities, there'll be space for him, he'll have runs here and there for periods of games, and he'll do something, but there was nothing. We absolutely shut him down. And that takes real organisation, by the way, that takes every single player in your team, in your defence, knowing where to be, knowing when to be there, absolutely huge credit to all of them. But of course, the main man, we've got to talk about Pau Kubasi, because I cannot even put into words how crazy all of this is. What we are seeing from him in the UEFA Champions League, he only made his Barca debut in January. This is only his 15th game in the first team. It's only his second game ever in the Champions League. And look at what he's doing. We saw the same thing against Napoli. This boy is unreal. He went head to head. He went head to head against Mbappe. People don't do that. Defenders are scared to their core to go and do that. Kubasi thought, OK, I'll take him on. I will match him stride for stride. And this photo right here, guys, this came when Kubasi played Mbappe offside. He stepped up. He played Mbappe off. He was in behind him. And yet Mbappe still made that run. He had a head start on Kubasi. He still catches him. He still makes the recovery tackle. And then he stands up and Mbappe is offside anyway. He played this game with absolute perfection against Mbappe. And then in the next breath... He's pinging passes everywhere. In the next breath, then, he's picking up the ball and he's starting moves from the back. He is doing absolutely everything right now. The composure of him, the confidence of this young man. He is honestly unbelievable. What a talent we have uncovered yet again coming through from La Masia. It is extraordinary. And I'm incredibly proud right now to see him playing at this level, to see him playing and wearing this Barcelona shirt. Pau Kubasi, we absolutely love you. But then there is the topic of Ousmane Dembele. Now, I just want to start by saying here, and making it very, very clear, it was his switch to a more central area last night of the field that caused Barca no end of problems. It was certainly Dembele who was PSG's biggest threat. He was so much more dangerous at PSG than Kylian Mbappe was, no question about that. And he put in a really strong performance. You have to hold your hands up and say that. He did get his goal, which was a very good one. Taking on the shot there, Ter Stegen could do absolutely nothing about that. And the little dummy before the goal was absolutely fantastic but of course after that goal then he went and celebrated and it was a big celebration too it wasn't just there celebrating a goal you know in a half-hearted way he really went for it and he was also really trying to get the PSG fans going and now many Barcelona fans are really unhappy about that because they feel as though look we've supported Dembele for so many years at this club through injury through setbacks we always tried to stay with him as much as possible and this is how he goes about repaying us but I've got to 
gotta say guys, and I've gotta be completely honest with you, I was not one bit surprised when Dembele did choose to celebrate. I honestly wouldn't have expected anything else, because I just think that's the kind of guy that he is, and I don't even mean that there in a malicious way, I don't think he celebrated there with the intent of frustrating Barca, or hurting Barca, or really showing Barcelona fans, and the real sad reality I actually think here, when it comes to Dembele is, I believe he celebrated yesterday because he was honestly happy to score a goal. He does not usually get the opportunity to celebrate. So obviously, he wasn't going to pass that up. This is only his second PSG goal ever. He's only ever scored twice. For instance, Rafinha has scored as many times at the Parc des Princes as Dembele has in this season so far. So I don't think that Dembele was really trying to hurt anybody. I don't think he even thought it that far through in his head. I think he just celebrated because he was happy to finally get on the score sheet. And I just never really feel as though Dembele had that connection with Barca in general. I never ever felt at his time at the club as though he wanted to really fight for the badge, you know, things like this, that he felt a real connection with the fans, of course. We know there was problems there. There always, always was with Dembele. So I think there, the celebration was kind of inevitable. But what about the second leg now? What does that do for the atmosphere inside the stadium? He is going to be playing up against Barca, returning to Barcelona against 50,000 fans inside of the stadium. And I think he's very lucky, by the way, that the game is not going to be at the camp now. That would be absolutely huge. But the atmosphere is going to be hostile. Dembele already knew that. It is kind of inevitable, given the way everything has played out between the two. I mean, Barca fans even booed Dembele when he was a Barca player. So can you imagine now what's going to happen as an opposition player it's going to add fuel to the fire the emotions are going to be really really high they're going to be running high on Tuesday and I can't wait for the atmosphere I cannot wait for the emotion of that whole game and by the way I just want to show you here a photo of Nasser Al-Khalifi after Barca scored their third goal I didn't know where to put this in today's video so look at that there look at Nasser's face isn't that absolutely beautiful. But the job's not done, guys. We have work to do. The second leg is upon us. We've got to apply ourselves. We've got to stay focused. We have to arrive with the right attitude to get this job done. And I'll be seeing you all very, very soon indeed. We're going to start building up to that game very quickly. It's all that's on our mind. It's all that we can think about right now. And do let me know, guys, your comments down below on Dembele, on the celebration, on Mbappe, on his ineffectiveness, and on this team, this Barcelona team that made us very very, very happy last night. I will catch you all soon. Thank you indeed for the great support. But until next time, as always, Vishka, Elbasa. Uh -huh.